Today I have the oral transmission and uh, I will give you the oral transmission first, then I'll give the teaching on transforming suffering and happiness into enlightenment. Lamdan <laughs> Comme <laughs> Tetra <laughs> Manda Kumbershajan, Snyan Stop Chirki Bala Flapo, Tela Guba Guni Mepan, Dunger de Chusu Yutna, Marga of Shia Mogojan, Chusum of Dumna, Marga of Shia Pamba Mepa Go, Niamuchiran, Zeri Mavshina, Simptoki, Dunger Chimbo, Yan River Tarta, River Star Yansan, Trapper, Turni Kurlavayu. Zeri, she be hunger, Dumur Chungoya, Yenma Deva, Tora Mazuta Nani Shinder, Shinder, Zukava, Wo, the Elfenam Zimim Sartigla, Togipton, Dochak, Gallo Shijan, Narvatam, the Zapar Tartar, the Murti of Doma, Namba Yed, Chichir Tadne, Zotun Kit Miniba, Wambur Gordon, be Manger Namli, Jonar Tatter, Dumur Tetor, Yishijim Samar Mazumur. Lord Nart, Zerle Ransur, Zonazu, Gum Gusso, Nipa, Dunger, the Chos of Tenia Gau Gombana, Dunger, Lamji Chos of Tenia Gau Gombana, Tel, Dunger, Gang, Shongjung of Luni, the Tumbia, Give Jure, the Chirjimena, Shir, Tamke, and Dana, Dunger, La Tene, Payon, and Dirtava, Tobo Yoto, Jiba Zamji, Mount of Samja, Namka, and Sergi Var. Yang Ranja, Varian Ran, Varian Ran, Zibartar the Sony of Guban Javaka It's raining again today. Can you close the windows? In order to benefit and liberate all sentient beings, let's generate the supreme bodhicitta. 
Now let's begin our class on transforming suffering and happiness into enlightenment. Both suffering and happiness need to be transformed onto the path of practice. In fact, this is really important to each and every one of us, especially nowadays. When we look at the world, there are so many changes happening. Everything's different. And because of that, there's so much suffering, some of which are quite excruciating. Some are because of the departing of their family members or loss of their family members, some because of uh, loss of job and uh, loss of support for their financial uh, situation. So many different kinds of changes that's happening nowadays. And that change creates suffering. So we really need to have lots of strength comes from determined mind. And this kind of determined mind doesn't come from nowhere. Without which, however, we won't be able to work with the suffering or face them at all. Therefore, we really need to study the ways of transforming suffering and happiness into enlightenment. We've talked quite a bit about how, how samsara is just like a house uh, on fire that is full of suffering. However, this year, I think because many things happened global-wise, uh, global-wide, and uh, everyone started to have a very refreshing perspective on the suffering of samsara. Whomsoever you are, wherever you are, when all these imaginable, unimaginable things that happen around you, there are people who can't face them and eventually end up making really irrational choices, doing irrational things. I think it has something to do with the strength of their mind as well as the wisdom. So today, let's continue with this, the teaching of this text. This text was composed by uh, Timpei Nima, the previous great master. Whom died in 1926. That's only about 100 years before now. But all the pith instructions he give in this text, I think, is actually quite profound and poignant for uh, all the sentient beings, especially nowadays. I've read many pith instructions on how to transform suffering and, and happiness into enlightenment, uh, including Rosum Pantita, as well as Milaripas, as well as many uh, masters from Kagyupa, same as um, uh, Mipa Rinpoche's teachings on how to transform sickness and suffering into, en into enlightenment. And each of them, of course, have uh, their very different perspective or aspect on how to transform suffering and uh, happiness into enlightenment. But um, Tempe Nima's teaching is actually quite poignant. It's the pith instruction that is very vivid, especially for today in the 21st century, especially for all the sentient beings nowadays in the year 2020 who are uh, currently going through lots of suffering. While we can recognize the nature of suffering and then learn how to face it and accept it, I think this is quite important for each and every one of us. Unless, of course, there are practitioners who are really wonderful at uh, during doing their practice, I think the rest of us are really very similar. Let it be Westerners, Easterners, people of different skin colors, different ethnics. Um, I think the suffering and happiness is really the same. 
It's very similar. Therefore, we need to learn from this text about how to transform suffering into enlightenment. In fact, each one of us would feel suffering. But because every one of us is so different, every one of uh, our uh, practice, realization, uh, inner insights, all of these are very different. Therefore, the way we face suffering is very different as well. As I talked about last week, uh, there's a book called Anti-Fragile, where it talked about uh, rather how to face situations uh, such as um, uh, financial crisis. It is not a teaching on Mahayana Buddhism practice, but it's more from the commerce or financial aspect. There are people who are rather quite fragile and they can't face suffering at all. They would completely collapse uh, in front of suffering. That's for weak people who give up very easily and uh, uh, do not stand up uh, in front of suffering. And there are, of course, another group of people who face suffering and obstacles with lots of resilience. Though he may experience pain as well, but he would be able to be very strong and choose or look at other options rather than give up really easily. He would persevere all the way to the end of suffering and live with uh, and uh, live through with the, the determination of uh, uh, his mind or strength of uh, such kind of mind. And for a very rare group of people, not only they can accept such kind of suffering, they not only they do not let suffering to crush them, they try to find opportunities inside all the sufferings. And through such kind of suffering or such kind of opportunity that's provided by suffering, they can uh, then make their life even better or even stronger, even more valuable. I think it really applies for the practitioners as well, these three principles, uh, the, the principles that's uh, talked above. Um, of course, we're not studying financial crisis or illness, but we're talking about how we how we can um, look at how we look at practitioners around us. There are practitioners who are completely crushed by suffering and uh, obstacles. Uh, there is a group of practitioners who would use their resilience and the strength of their uh, mind and. Uh, uh, persevere all the way to the end. And there is a very small group of practitioners. They would seize the opportunity of obstacle and thrive from obstacles. Lots of the teachings taught us, in fact, the enemies are of great help to us. Because without enemies, we won't be able to recognize the nature of our mind, just like Milarepa. Without all the obstacles that he encountered in his life, he won't be able to get enlightened. Another example is some practitioners who uh, who got ill, and because of such illness, they in the, they attend enlightenment, uh, such as uh, Bhikkhuni Pamo, who we talked about in the seven practices of training the mind. So there are people who are viewed as unlucky or unfortunate, and uh, going through lots of obstacles and so on. However, to that specific person, it may be an opportunity. It may be an opportunity to um, 
thrive from whatever obstacles that they are going through, and eventually find、uh, some valuable lessons or learn from such a uh, uh, and gain valuable lessons from such、uh, experience. Therefore, I really hope that each one of our listeners can、uh, gain benefit from this teaching, transforming suffering and happiness into enlightenment. How can you gain benefit then? I think the theory is very simple. It's not like the very thorough inference that's taught in the Buddhist logics. Nor the non-duality and、uh, equanimity、uh, and one taste of、uh, the tantric teaching, esoteric teachings, but the teachings over here is very grounded and really simple to understand. But with such grounded language, it talks about the nature or the secret of our mind. As long as we can understand such. A、uh, profound meaning, especially if we familiarize ourselves with diligence and with lots of、uh, devotion and lots of practice. Maybe this simple pith instruction can change our life drastically. For example, maybe you think that you don't really have a good fate. Your destiny hadn't been too、uh, kind to you. However, after learning this text, you would be able to understand how to transform all the sufferings and obstacles happen in your life, and whatever adversities you would encounter after this, you will be able to、um, work with any situations with、uh, lots of confidence. So I think listening to this class and studying this text is, in fact, quite necessary. So let's continue. Well, yesterday we've talked about. First, you have to get rid of attitude of being entirely unwilling to face any suffering ourselves, and then second, to cultivate the attitude of actually being joyful when suffering arises. So these two are really important. That's where we stopped yesterday. First of all, let's look at dropping the attitude of being entirely unwilling to suffer. I think for many people, it's many people would think that how can you do that? Because I don't want suffering. Many people would wish that please don't let me feel suffering and pain. I would, I would like to have happiness and peace and calm and、uh, safety all the time. You could think in such a way, but that's just really wishful thinking, because. Due to everyone's different karma, the life and、uh, situation happens in your life will be very different,、uh, would differ from one and another. So it's really just making.、Um, You're just really making an empty wish. You could say as much as you want that, please let me be safe and happy and healthy. You could do that. Of course, you could make such wishes, but is it going to come true? Well, it's really not necessarily. Just like the young people would go to different temples and monasteries, that's what they would do. There are times, of course, such prayers would work, would work, but not necessarily all of them would work, because everyone's karma, the the wind of karma is really strong. Just like a flood coming to,、uh, just like the flood into a valley,、uh, the flood could have carried lots of、uh, strength.、Uh, so whenever. Your karma ripens. You could pay ten dollars to the bodhisattvas and ask the bodhisattvas to protect you, but the karma that you've accumulated is from a very long period of time, from lifetimes.、Uh, can you resolve that with ten dollars? Well, that's that's very difficult to say. Just like if a thief tried to bribe a, a, 
uh, a police or the supervisor of the police with ten dollars and ask them, can you please not lock me up? Well, it's a little bit difficult. That is to say, in fact, all the karma that we've accumulated, in fact, carries lots of strength and lots of um, the force. So it is very difficult to avoid suffering in your life. Even if you go and get ordained to uh, take different um, uh, vows, uh, lay practitioner vows, and uh, so on, try to avoid suffering, but when the karma uh, is matured wherever you run to it you cannot escape from such suffering or such uh, matured fruition so what's the only way out then from the Mahayana practitioners point of view or practice point of view uh, just like when we studied the seven practices of uh, training the mind I think this is quite important it's important to repeatedly to study that because you cannot only study it for one year you should you should really familiarize yourself and repeatedly study that so that slowly it will make your mind more malleable more tamed similarly uh, when you study this teaching this pith instruction it will be helpful to your life and practice uh, what kind of help would it provide it would help you in such a way that you would realize the mind of rejecting suffering is not of any use doesn't matter what kind of suffering or uh, a feeling of rejection or sadness whenever obstacle comes simply thinking that I don't want suffering doesn't work it doesn't provide any solution when suffering appears you can think all you want that I don't want you to come I don't want suffering to come however you really can't stop it you cannot stop flooding you cannot stop it with any easy ways there's no easy way out so what should you do? Of course, if you have different methods, of course, you can try to avoid it in terms of your lifestyle, in terms of uh, through your practice. If you can avoid letting suffering to fall onto your shoulders, of course, you can do that because uh, Mayana Buddhism is not about taking up unnecessary sufferings it is good if you can avoid it but when the suffering is already here or is already coming and you cannot stop it by only thinking that please don't let me suffer please don't let any obstacles happen it doesn't make any changes it doesn't make any difference therefore it's not necessary you will only become a more and more weak and more fragile and more upset and more unnecessary just like when people get sick um, of course it would be wonderful to be healthy but when you're sick if you keep thinking that I don't want to get sick why am I getting sick why me if you keep thinking in such a way in fact just simply being upset won't contribute any favorable condition for you to get healthy rather it would make you feel more anxious more upset and um, make your health decline people would go to hospital and then if the doctor tells them that they are having late stage cancer uh, stage 4 cancer and some people would say that well it's fine um, early stage late stage it's fine and uh, the doctor say well you need to take surgery and surgery and then chemotherapy but there are people who once heard that they're just completely uh, completely collapsed they cannot hold this with their mind at all they cannot face it that's just really because you don't have a big strength in your heart in your mind and 
because of such lack of strength in your mind, then you may have uh, your condition may even worsen. But if you have strength in your mind, thinking that well, if I get sick, I get sick, and it's just impermanence. If you have such kind of mentality and such kind of mindset, then at least they won't make your、uh, your illness worse. This is quite important. People may think that why me? I think there are people who kept on saying why me, and this is some, such a funny way of thinking. There are practitioners I heard they would say, "Why are you coming to me? There's so many other people you could ask for." Just as, a, a, just as a, if a person who committed murder got caught, and then. The murderer would say that why did you catch me? There are so many other people who who killed other people who killed people. Why me? I think this is quite a silly way of thinking. This why me mentality. Therefore, throughout practice. Uh, in fact, we've already learned that sentient beings in the three realms. In the in in the three realms, they have to face and death, illness, and all different kinds of obstacles sooner or later. We may want to have happiness. We we would cry out for happiness. All the all of those hot terms that's online that says happiness and health. But is it really true? Is that really what you have inside? I think you can really look inside and、um, and see for yourselves. So no matter what, if you have a little bit of realization in your mind, you should not let anything to disturb your mind. Just as in the Bodhisattva Charyavatara, where it says that whatever things I encounter, I would not abandon a heart or a mind of joyfulness. If suffering is, if obstacles, if if worrying does not provide a solution,、uh, Why worry? Because it would even harm all the possibilities of good actions. Just like from the medical point of view, if you get anxious or upset, your immune system would decline and your health would decline、uh, as well. So when people Get diagnosed with、uh, some severe illness, and then got notice from hospital right away. They feel terrified, and then they get really anxious and upset and uh, uh, depressed. And in such a way, you would encounter even worse health conditions. So we need to have rather a very calm and、uh, and、uh, practice with a mind of equanimity. This is quite important because once you get weak or once you get、um, beaten down by the obstacles, I think the situation could worsen. The next one, and then it says that.、Uh, You should repeatedly、uh, contemplate so that you will have a sense of firm understanding or determination. What does it mean by having this determination? What does it mean by absolute convinced by this? It means that you have to develop a, a certainty. It is whenever suffering occurs in your life or adversity occurs in your life, instead of thinking that why me, so unfortunate, so unlucky,、uh, instead of thinking of that, you should develop the certainty and、uh, do not make a fuss about it. Rather, have a rather、uh, peace of mind. If you don't know what. Certainty of、uh, if you don't understand what develop certainty is, you should start study the、uh, torch of certainty, and then you will be able to understand. 
Then say to yourself, from now on, whatever I have to suffer, I will never become anxious or irritated. Go over this again and again in your mind and summon all your courage and determination. I think this is really important. This is a very important、uh, paragraph. There are people would say that I've never、uh, encountered suffering. I'm really happy. I'm really optimistic. I think that's really because you haven't noticed, or maybe there has、uh, haven't been、uh, something that that is rather very difficult for you to、uh, to deal with yet. So you should study this if you want to be able to face different obstacles. Whatever obstacles, some of them could be because of relationships or, or because of illness, because of、um, slandering, or because of、uh, no, not enough food or enough、uh, clothing to keep you warm, or loss of freedom. So there's so many different kinds of sufferings that mundane beings or sentient beings would suffer, such as eight kinds of or ten kinds of sufferings, and、uh, all the way to To immeasurable number of sufferings, so whenever you think about suffering, we、uh, we should、um, again and again、uh, contemplate in your mind.、Uh, think about that. Whatever I have to suffer, I will never become anxious or irritated. Instead of feeling that. Instead of feeling that oh, finally class is over, Kempo is getting so talkative and and kept on repeating himself, and no longer read the book or listen to the class again. That is not called repeatedly and diligently and wholeheartedly、uh, to devote in this teaching. In fact, after today's class, you should read it. Tomorrow, you should read it. Day after, you should study repeatedly every day, and uh, uh, you should diligently practice. Practice on it. In,、uh, it this kind of、uh, rule applies to studying of any new knowledge, so that slowly and slowly, the knowledge and the the teachings would make a difference in your life. Otherwise, if you only Dabble tiny bit on the surface of it, and just said, "Oh, I studied it. I read it. I glimpsed through it. It's okay. I think this kind of mentality is not going to help you、uh, in.、Uh, it's not going to help you uh, in uh, any of practical situations. On top of that, you should practice with great determination and diligence." There are people only say that well I should I should transform suffering to enlightenment, but they're really just saying it in a very superficial way because they haven't really practiced with lots of de- determination.、Uh, if you practice on the、uh, great. Perfection,、uh, practicing on impermanence, but you only practice for one session, and without any great determination or、uh, or devotion, then you only have one or two minutes of sitting,、uh, practicing guru yoga or so. I think it's not really going to help you. Of course, there are people who practice for only as short as one or two minutes, but they. They would practice with such great devotion and determination, and from their from their facial expressions, we can see that they have great devotion. So it is important to practice with great determination. Otherwise,、uh, your otherwise dharma is dharma, and your mind is your mind. Therefore, you have to practice with great de- de- great determination and diligence, so that you can transform your narrow mindedness. I think once I read from、uh, one of the seven treasures where it says that the mundane beings do not develop the sensitivity for suffering because they don't recognize what suffering is. 
and uh, uh, it's just like when there is a particle landed on one's hand palm. That's how mundane beings perceive suffering. However, the noble ones have rather very clear understanding of what suffering is, and uh, they perceive it just as when a small particle landed on their eyeball. There is such kind of metaphor. I think it's just to that, just like that, mundane beings do not pay attention to the sufferings that happens around their life. They don't really. They don't really. They try to avoid seeing it. However. Um, the noble ones would notice all the sufferings that happens in their life, so that it would motivate them to uh, practice diligently and with lots of determination. And then eventually, their mind would become more open and no longer narrow. In the morning, I had a guest over. Um, he's one of my relative. You can call him. A, I can call him a cousin. He's of the same age of me, and maybe a few months younger. We used to herd the yaks when we were young to, uh, together. He loves fighting. He loves fighting with everybody. And whenever he has anger arose in his heart, uh, it almost seems like he doesn't feel pain at all. So we haven't seen each other for a long time. And I asked him in the morning if he still fight with others. He said, "No, I don't really fight anymore. And uh, now I'm practicing." And、uh, I asked him how many times he fought with others. He said maybe over twenty times. Sometimes with knife, sometimes with rocks. And he said he really enjoyed fighting with others, or really prone to fight with others.、Um, now, after he relied on、uh, his teacher.、Um, He realized that he he get angry too much, and it is not a good thing. And so I asked him, "Well,、uh, what if people hit you now?" He said that even if people use a knife to stab me, I will not fight back. So through his experience, we can see that people can change through practice, and their mind can change through practice. He's、uh, closer to my mother's side, so I know him very well. He used to fight a lot, and he、uh, used rocks and all different weapons that he can get his hands to. But now, after practicing Dharma, his mind gets more tamed, and his temper is completely different. So, Dharma practice has such power to transform. A person. Therefore, we don't really need to、uh, search for lots of high teachings or、uh, profound theories. Rather, we should practice up on such ground, such grounded teachings like this text. When your when suffering occurs, when you encounter obstacles, do not get beaten up. Do not feel that I. I'm hopeless. Do not feel that this is the rock bottom, and、uh, feeling like to give up everything, because this kind of negative mentality would make us feel even more、um, powerless. Therefore, we really need to find a place to rely. So that's something that we need to practice in our life. Westerners nowadays would think that Western、uh, Westerners usually would consider that you should not put all your eggs in one basket. If you have a million dollars, you should not put all your or all your money in one investment company. Why is that? Because you may get money from it, you may earn more money from it, or may not. Because this company could um, um, claim bankruptcy, and then if you have all your money there, then you will get completely. 
um, bankrupt as well. Therefore, you should put the money in different places. Similarly, uh, how we how we find a place of refuge, uh, how we find a place to rely on, uh, should not be only one place either, including uh, relationship. And all your love should not go to only your parents or your or your brothers. You should not put your love to a single person, such as your mother. If your mother pass away, then everything just collapse in your world then there is no more place for you to rely upon and your life would uh, just uh, end in such a way uh, many people had never practiced so when you lose things that matters to you such as people you love such as wealth then you have no way to deal with such kind of life anymore because when people are going through extreme suffering, it could make them lose a clear mind or clear sight. And because of that, lots of psychologists also support uh, support of this um, this statement or the, through their research they support this kind of uh, um, uh, statement where they said that when people are at their rock bottom their their IQ just drops and it's not a best time to make decisions so when people are extremely angry do not make any choices or any decisions otherwise it might be a decision you would regret for your whole life there are people who had made such regretful decisions during great anger or under affliction attack they either stab others or uh, or cut their own wrists a moment that you lose your right mindfulness things that you do at that moment could be very horrifying of course Buddhists should have right mindfulness but um, uh, and and Buddhists are very accustomed to the practice of right mindfulness but for mundane beings they never had such experience of practicing so so they would do all different kinds of things I went to uh, many different different um, um, prisons to teach and whenever I get an opportunity I would ask them how did you get here and, and what led you to uh, get here and there are people who would say that uh, I was extremely angry I killed my wife or my kids or I killed others and so on but now I feel really regretful but everything's over there's nothing I can do at this point just as in Bodhisattva Charyavatara it is stated that when I am having uh, greed or uh, desire an uh, anger uh, and so on I should stop my mind I, I should stop any speech or action and uh, uh, stay as and uh, uh, stay as a tr as uh, uh, a tree uh, how a tree would this is in fact uh, quite important you should wait for your mood to calm down a bit before you make any other decisions also whenever you are extremely happy you should not make promises of giving people other things nor should you make any decisions to whenever you are under the influence of great anger or make any other kinds of actions at all nowadays there are some celebrities 
Sometimes things that happens in uh, his own home or own family went wrong, he would right away post on his social media and then feel quite regretful afterwards. Some celebrity uh, last year did things like this, and later on they wanted to retreat or retrieve that post, and they cannot do so anymore because it, because it is so well known by then. So when people are under the influence of great jealousy, anger, as well as uh, other afflictions, uh, you should try not to make any decisions at all. Otherwise, you may make uh, decisions that you that really doesn't go with uh, what you plan to. This is quite important. There is a, a word, of, a, a phrase in Chinese, it's called lightning marriage, it's a speedy marriage. So you get married just as a speed as a lightning and get divorced at the same uh, same speed as well. So first you meet someone right away, you want to spend your whole life with that person and get married right away. But whenever there's any kinds of uh, afflictions or conflicts arise, uh, you you want to get divorced again as well, divorced as well. Therefore, lots of the teachings that that's given even in the worldly sense, I think we should try to study it as well and try to maintain a natural and normal state of mind. And in order to attain such kind of natural mind, then we need to practice diligently with lots of determination as well as practice repeatedly so that your mind won't be so fragile and your mind would naturally open and expand more and more uh, so that whenever you encounter things that's harder for the non-practitioners uh, to um, to face, you can face it and you can persevere through it. So in such a way, it is very beneficial to you. Uh, Ashva Gosha composed a Shastra, that is Shastra of Great Ornament, and then later translated by Master Xuanzang. Uh, within it, there was a story that a bhikshu was giving teachings. At the time, he was revered by many and offered by many as well, but at the time there was this one person who just really doesn't like him and uh, uh, started to slandering uh, about him. After a while, however, the bhikshu told his uh, attendant and said that I am going to praise the person who doesn't like me and I'm going to offer him some of the clothings. And the attendant doesn't understand at all and saying that no, you can't do that. He is he's treating you so badly and slandering a lot behind your back. And the bhikshu said that, I understand that, but his slandering is very beneficial to me. It is because he's slandering, uh, I am eliminating the uh, I am eliminating the eight worldly dharmas, and I am a becoming a much better practitioner. So if we were to think about the things that would happen like such in a worldly sense, I think the non-practitioners would rather be uh, completely opposite. If people are really nice to you, you'll be happy. And if people are praising you, you're very happy about that, even if you don't have all of the merit that they are praising you about. But if you, if you are criticized by others, if uh, you are slandered by others, I think it would be rather very difficult for you to accept it, even if whatever things that the others criticizing you about are true, you would still be very upset about it. Uh, just like what it, how it is stated in the Treasury of Aphorism, it says that other people's praises will not turn into uh, happiness and other people's criticism will not t turn into into suffering. You sh one uh, should uh, abide in one's own merit, and that is the characteristic of a wise one. Of course, it is very difficult for people to uh, actually do it. But through practice, I think the <coughs> practitioners can actually attain something similar to it. Maybe at the beginning, there could be a little bit suffering, and they can be 
very fragile. But of course, everyone's afflictions are very different. Some have afflictions towards uh, wealth, and some towards relationships, and some some towards fame and uh, social status. Everyone has their own uh, shortcomings. There are people who really care about money. But not so much about the relationships. As long as it doesn't really get to his money, he'll be fine. He has a good practice. And if there are people, but there are, of course, people who who has the shortcoming or who has rather the weak spot of um, uh, having certain difficulties in relationships. Uh, so it's very different. But if you can continuously to practice, your mind will become much more broader. And if your mind becomes broader, it's uh, it is through the diligent practice if you want to have such kind of mind. In Mahaprajna Paramita Sutra, it says that if you have afflictions, wisdom cannot manifest. And if wisdom cannot manifest, then all the maras and the difficulties will have the opportunities to seize you. According to the Jewel Heap Sutra, it says that as long as there is a place, as long as the people grasp onto love, there is the opportunity to, um, there is the manifestation of uh, uh, greed. Uh, as long as there is a place of hate, of a hate or anger, there is affliction of aggression. Uh, if there is neither love nor hate, there is ignorance. And because of all different kinds of afflictions, the mind is constantly in the state that is not natural. And because of that, many sufferings would uh, appear. So we have to practice diligently on our mind, and I think our mind would definitely be very different if you do so. Everyone has desire, and uh, everyone has uh, different afflictions, but you have to believe in your own capacity. Everyone has such opportunity, and everyone has such a capacity and the capability to do so. Therefore, uh, as long as we practice in depth with great de determination and diligence, we can, we can definitely work with our afflictions this is really important to remember. Um, and now this, the next one, it says that first, let's look at how useless it is. If we can do something to solve a problem, then there's no need to worry or to be unhappy about it. If we can't, then it doesn't help to worry or to be unhappy about it either. So if the things can be turned or can be resolved, then why worry? You have opportunity to work on it, so just change it or work on it. Or on the second one, it says that if there's no way to resolve it, it's just as if you already broke the vase and there's no way to uh, bring it back to its original state, then why worry about it? Just as it is stated in the Bodhisar Bodhisattva Charivatara, where it says that since if there's opportunity to resolve the problem, then uh, why to be unhappy about it? If there's no way to resolve the problem, what's the what's the use of being uh, unhappy about it? So whenever you encounter anything, uh, any adversity, try to uh, be strong and not to be so fragile, not to be so upset. Why is that? Uh, because you can 
analyze it with your own wisdom and to think about it if there's any way to resolve it. If there is a way to resolve it, of course you can. You can be a little bit upset for a short moment, but you know that it, it can be resolved. So uh, it, it, you won't uh, dwell on that uh, that uh, bad mood. And if you can't resolve it, suffer from it doesn't really help in any ways. So that's one of the really sharp、um, inference that is provided by Bodhisattva Charivatara, and one way to practice on it. So that's the first、uh, aspect, and then the second aspect. Then it says that if you, if、um, the enormous trouble involved, as long as we don't get anxious or irritated, then our strength of mind will enable us to bear even the hardest of suffering easily. They'll feel as flimsy, as insubstantial as cotton wool.、Um, so, as we often say, that in fact the actual event doesn't really crush you. It is the emotion that crushes you. So, you have to face things with great、uh, bravery, even if it's some great adversity with lots of、um, uh, pain. That might bring to you. However, if you have lots of bravery and strength, then whatever happens to you is just like stepping on top of very soft and flimsy cotton. It's not so substantial anymore. It's not so solid and uh, uh, makes you feel.、Um, Claustrophobic. Rather, you feel that you can completely, uh, uh, completely uh, handle whatever is happening. In fact, there's, in fact, there's always a way. There is always a way out. Whatever happens in your life, you have to believe that there is always a way out, as long as you have a strong mind. From my personal experience, I I have a very deep、um, understanding of that. I have a very deep experience of that.、Uh, I think the Westerners always like to talk about personal experiences so that it could lead to contemplation.、Uh, I think from my personal experience,、uh, although I'm not saying that I have、uh, I am fully enlightened. Or I am great at practicing Tonglen. It's not that, but I personally think that in terms of practicing impermanence and practicing renunciation, I am rather a good practitioner. Every every time、uh, there is any、uh, adversities happen in my life, I would try to see it from a different angle.、Uh, at the end of last year, my original plan was to go to Russia, Dubai, Poland. England and many other countries, and、uh, lots of really wonderful schools provided such great opportunities, and I was invited to those places.、Uh, on one hand, to share some of my、uh, uh, share some of my. Uh, uh, think uh, philosophy as well as my experience. So from deep of my mind, I really wanted to go, but due to many different reasons, I couldn't. And including the COVID, it was very difficult to go. I felt a little bit upset at the beginning because I prepared for a very long period of time.、Um, but then later on, I felt that if I can't, I can't. So I used that time, and I started doing lots of translation, especially the. Um, the sutras that is kept or taught in、uh, Mandarin, but not in Chinese, but not in Tibetan, such as Kshiti Garba Sutra,、uh, Sutra of Filial Piety, Sutra of、uh, Ordination, and the Sikalabada Sutra, as well as the Vasubandhu's Shastra of、uh, uh, of Reborn in Pure Land, and so on. So I, I took that time and took advantage of that、uh, spare time and translated a lot, which made my time 
uh, really meaningful. From that aspect, yes, if I go to those schools, I would be happy. But if I don't go to the schools, I my time was really valuable and turned out to be really good as well. Just as Miparin Buche said that um, sometimes uh, the sometimes the adversities. Sometimes the favorable conditions are disguised as adversities.、Um, at the beginning, maybe the adversity is very difficult to accept, but later on, afterwards, when you look back at that difficult period of time, you would realize, oh, thank, thankfully, things happened in such a way. It turned out to be very meaningful.、Uh, back in 2002, I got really ill. Also, I had some.、Uh, People slandering me behind my back, and many different difficulties happened at the time. So I decided to completely enter into a retreat for a while. So from to from the end of two thousand one, I started translating the extensive bi biography of、uh, Shakyamuni Buddha,、uh, and by twelfth、uh, of May, I finished translating、uh, the biography of、uh, White Lotus. Without being sick, I probably won't have the courage to translate the 500-page-long、uh, Digga version of uh, uh, sutra and then,、uh, or text. I probably won't have such great bravery or courage. But I think it was really wonderful.、Uh, during the day, I would take every drips and、uh, stay in hospital, and in the afternoon, I would do my translations. I also did lots of writing, such as a collection of、uh, Q and As of Tibetan esoteric Buddhism. As well as uh, uh, collected uh, interviews of、uh, different PhDs, so many different books, and、uh, I remembered that、uh, that short time of the year. In the short time of six months,、uh, it was very, in fact, really valuable.、Uh, around May the second,、uh, there was a big building that's already. Finished the building and my translation also finished. So I think from many different aspects, it was really quite auspicious.、Uh, at the time, Pencil Grand Bache was in Chengdu, so I went back to、uh, Chengdu after finished translation, and then we all came back to、uh, Larongar together.、Uh, At the time, I felt that my life could have been over because of sickness and all the slandering and so on.、Uh, I mentioned that quite a bit in my journal. That is、uh, footprints of、uh, the journey. I worried very much that I, I may.、Um, I may have to. I, I may、uh, not be able to finish translating、uh, the lotus, bi、uh, lotus of、uh, white lo. The biography of white lotus. I may have died halfway be in between. But、uh, at the time, I think it was such a great opportunity for me. Also, in 2016, my mother died. I had a big surgery. There are lots of big changes in Larongar, but I give teachings in the Lotus Sutra, in the Medicine Buddha Sutra, in、uh, dis uh, discourse on Ten Wholesome Action Sutra, and um, um, Precious Garland of、uh, Supreme Dharma,、uh, Ishi Lama, as well as、um, uh, Treasury of Dharma Dhatu. So many people once that they. Meet, they they encounter different、uh, uh, sufferings. They probably couldn't imagine how life could go on. They feel like life would go is going to end right away. But I think at that time you can look. Maybe there's another way around. You can walk. From the side door or something,、uh, instead of thinking that、uh, you have to go this way. You don't have to be that stubborn. You can look from a different angle. In fact, people could have different kinds of sufferings. At the time, you have to get, you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared when you do encounter such kind of suffering. I think you can look for other meaning and other value of your life.
In such a way, it is quite meaningful. Uh, so don't be so uh, fragile and uh, have a big and strong heart. In such a way, whatever big adversity is not going to harm you even a single bit. Next one, it talks about. However, a while we're. Uh, dominated by anxiety, even the tiniest problem becomes extremely difficult to cope with because we have the diff、uh, we have the additional burden of mental discomfort and unhappiness. Over here, it talks about the opposite angle. It says that even when you encounter the, even the tiniest、uh, pain, but this kind of pain could make you feel that oh, I have so much pain. What do I do? And by thinking in such a way, you're actually adding more into that unhappiness, would which could eventually、uh, crush you at the end. So. Big or small pain really depends on how you feel and depends on your own strength of mind. Sometimes、uh, I found that I would give you teachings in class, but maybe I have no such intention of criticizing people.、Uh, but、uh, there are listeners who feel that oh, compose criticizing me. And there are people who would take it very seriously, and everyone's reaction of my teaching is very different. So the pain or suffering is very different, and how they would categorize the big pain from the small pain is very different. It all depends on the capacity of their mind. In、uh, Bodhisattva Charyavatara, it says that when you are encountering the When you are suffering from、uh, afflictions, even the smallest pain will、uh, be enlarged, just like just like a, a crow、uh, is much more powerful in front of a dead snake.、Uh, so when we look at our mind, I think the sentient beings. Uh, are suffering a lot because they think they're suffering a lot, but in fact they don't know that the pain is really not that strong. Before they wear out their karma, their habitual pattern, they would continuously to feel that the pain is very strong. So it's very important for everyone to study how to transform suffering into enlightenment or onto the path. Yesterday, I talked quite a bit about. I talked a little bit about. Uh, how mi misery is fortune in disguise. In fact, there's a story in Chinese that says that there's a herdsman who lost his horse, and the neighbor was uh, uh, the neighbor came. Came by and said and tried to console him, saying that don't be upset about it. In fact, he had a quite a big heart, and he said it's okay. You, you never know if it's a good thing or bad.、Uh, after a few years, his horse came back along with a small pony, and the neighbor came by to congratulate him, saying that uh, uh, it's a wonderful thing. But he said, well, it's not necessarily a good thing, and then. After a few days, his son was riding the little pon the little pony and、uh, fell off the horse and、uh, broke his leg. The neighbor came by saying, "Oh, I'm so sorry that your son、uh, broke his leg." Uh, but uh, uh, then later, because his son broke his leg,、uh, he his son doesn't have to go to the war anymore. So because of because of his son、uh, got injured, he saved his life. Therefore, sometimes we can see that. Bad things or misfortune could really be、uh, fortune or good luck in disguise. Same as practitioners, that's how we should view our life. When you have when you have fame, it's it may not be very good for you.、Uh, when you have money, it may not be good for you because it could all all of them could give you、uh, make you feel more arrogant about your. Yourself,、uh, 
Um, similarly, without money may not be a bad thing because it could help you to generate genuine renunciation. Therefore, whatever happens, I think as a practitioner, we will be able to see the good side of it, and we'll be able to accept anything that happens in life. Just as how some psychologists think that there are two ways of thinking: one is a growth mentality, and the other one is a stagnate mentality. The growth ment the Usually, people would think about, would have the mentality of saying that you have to attain something, otherwise you are a failure.、Uh, but the growth mentality would see that, well, if you didn't get a good grade, then take it as a, as a, a. a, a And an experience of learning, so that next time you can do better, and、uh, you will learn a lot from the experience of not doing well in this exam. I think practitioners should learn from that. We should be ready for all kinds of changes in our life, and we should always be ready to learn from our experiences, whatever happens in our life. So over here, it is、uh, over here. Then it says that imagine, for example, trying to get rid of desire and attachment for someone we find attractive, while continuing to dwell all、uh, the well on their attractive qualities. It would be, it would all be in vain. Because at that time your mind is concentrating on the state where your mind is suffering, and in that way, it's very hard to endure. It means that when you are having this desire and attachment. That's already、um, that's already afflictions, and when you have such afflictions already, and then you focus on the object of affliction, then whatever you're trying would be in vain,、um, because. So in such a way, if you keep thinking that oh, I'm in pain, and this is such, uh, uh, this is such bad luck, and so on,、uh, your mind is focusing on that negative aspect, or your mind is focusing on the aspect that is. That is attacked by afflictions. Therefore, your mind will be very difficult to endure it.、Uh, just as yesterday, we talked about how if we continuously to familiarize ourselves with the, the mind of uh, uh, suffering, then naturally suffering will continuously to grow. That's just an,、uh, the nature of it. In just the same way, if we concentrate only the pain brought by suffering, we'll never be able to develop. Endurance or the ability to bear it, as in the in the instruction called the sealing doors of senses, don't latch onto all kinds of mind-made concepts about your suffering. Learn instead to leave the mind undisturbed undist in its own natural state. Bring the mind home, rest there, and let it find its own ground. I think this is really important.、Uh, it is normally because people's mind is not at natural state、uh, that is、uh, at home. Because their mind is not at home,、uh, they would. Take up、uh, extreme actions such as committing suicide or self-harm. If the mind is at its natural state and undisturbed, even the biggest suffering occurs in your life. It would be very difficult for it to harm you. This is quite important. When 
when desire occurs or aggression occurs, those are all deluded thoughts. Those are all non、uh, are the are the wrong thoughts, are the deluded、um, thinking, which makes us suffer so much. So mind naturally has two states. One is peace and calm in the relative uh, state. Uh, in such a state, you can carry out your action, and whatever you do would be reasonable and、uh, would be、uh, rather acceptable. So you should. Make sure your mind stays in that natural state and、uh, carry out your actions. I don't think Buddhist would commit suicide or things that's just really extreme like such.、Um, when people's mind are very disturbed, all different kinds of、uh, evil spirits have their、uh, have the opportunities to take over your mind.、Um, many people wanted to commit suicide when their mind is so disturbed. Then the, the Maras would be coming to to guide you, saying that you will be happier after. You commit suicide and so on. That is why, when people、uh, are about to commit suicide, they would post in social media and saying that、uh, I am going to die, which is the better place for me to be, and I'm going to depart this world.、Uh, and、uh, I'm sure after I die, everything would be much better. And then they would jump into the water and commit suicide. Um, so usually, and sometimes it is because of the guidance of Maras, and、uh, people didn't do it、uh, completely willingly. Therefore, when you have. Therefore, you should supplicate to、um, the guru as well as the three jewels. Otherwise, if, as a Buddhist, if you have all different kinds of afflictions, it's really not that great. Now the next one is also extremely important. Not only、uh, you shouldn't think that I don't want suffering. You should be happy when suffering comes. You should think that oh, I'm so lucky. I am having a bad mood day. I have afflictions. That's really wonderful. I'm quite irritated today. That's wonderful. So,、uh, practitioners is very unusual in such a way compared to the mundane people, to the non-practitioners. Because to the non-practitioners, those are the things that's extremely difficult for them to deal with, or to to、uh, to face. But for For、uh, practitioners, they would treat such a kind of adversity as if they're stepping on soft cotton,、uh, such as、uh, the the worldly、uh, people would feel great suffering if their parents died,、uh, or if they feel that they're bankrupted and and so on. But practitioners, they all have a way to deal with it. Of course, you have to. Continuously to familiarize yourself again and again with great diligence, and to continuously open up your own mind. If you cannot do that,、uh, then suffering would be suffering, and practice would be practice. Doesn't matter if you've already or get ordained for years.、Um, people would say that I am the lineage. Uh, I'm from so and so lineage. I've practiced for twenty years. If you practice for twenty years, but your mind is not emerged with the Dharma, it's just as it is. It is stated in the uh, in the uh, aphorism of water and wood. It says that even if rock, even if you soak rocks in water for a hundred years, the rock won't be wet. So it is quite important to.、Uh, Change your own mind stream. You have to, of course, this kind of change doesn't take a long period of time, but it has to be very effective because you need to practice diligently and wholeheartedly. That's the way to maximize the strength of your practice. This is quite crucial. If you don't practice diligently, if if the Efficiency of your practice is not that strong. Just simply saying that you chanted so and so mantra and stayed in so and so、uh, centers, then whenever afflictions、uh, happen, it's just like you're non-practitioners. 
there used to be there's a military school people people came out from that military school graduated from there are extremely brave whatever uh, battle they attend they they went to they're really brave I think in the in this in the battlefield of practitioners if you practice well you will be extremely brave in front of all of the sufferings or pain that occurs in front of you if you only listen to classes um, and uh, if you only listen to the class but waste your life and waste your time I think it is not really useful and by simply listening to it it's not very effective and not efficient without such efficiency you're you're only getting the merit of listening to Mahayana Dharma but there's really no practical um, solutions for uh, your life or to face those uh, afflictions so I really hope everyone could face suffering uh, I really hope that you can be really strong in the actual actions if you're only talking about I need to be strong I need to be strong this is not enough you really have to put it into your practice you ha really have to familiarize yourself with the teachings that stated here and I truly think that everyone has the potential and everyone has such capacity the key is whether you can familiarize yourself uh, with your practice the Buddha said also I am giving you the teaching of the path of liberation but liberation is completely depending on yourself to transform happiness and suffering onto the path um, I think I myself have some genuine experiences because if I have not uh, practiced it when I was young, I don't think you will be attending my classes. Therefore, I think all of you who's listening to it, you definitely spend a lot of time in studying it, in studying the Dharma. I really hope that you try to make this period of time very efficient to put whatever you've listened into actual practice, into uh, actual familiarization into your daily life. And in such a way, you will gain the benefit. And once you gain the benefit from from such teachings you can practice it on your own and you can share it with others and all such kind of uh, then such kind of teaching will have strength it will create influence it's just as um, um, it in Mahayana teaching there's peace instructions but if peace instructions is only on word then peace instructions is peace instruction and you are you and there is a huge gap in between it therefore I hope that you do not grasp only onto the words but you should take all of the words into your heart and we'll stop here today Sonnende,